Okay guys, back with the circle. Today is one of those difficult videos. This is a viewer requested video, something we've got a lot of. Um, and I've avoided it because it's a really hard topic to approach. Basically, people want to know what does and doesn't constitute a well-converted or well-kit-bashed miniature. Now, this is hard because it's pretty subjective, um, which is why I stay away from it. That said, people have asked for it. I try to give our opinions and try to do what people ask for on this channel as best I can. So today I am going to tackle it head on. That said, the pictures I pulled together, I don't know the original sources for them. Certain pictures, I found three or four different versions of them all belonging to four different websites. So I don't have a clue who the original person is that created them. So if you see your stuff here and you want a credit, please let me know. I'll put it in the description or in the comments below. Second, for the people who um, are wondering, the images presented here, I'm not trying to critique the people and call them shit, okay? The, the images that are presented here are just entirely for demonstrative purposes. I'm not trying to put them down, not trying to demean their hobby. Some of these were made for a laugh. Some of the things here, um, the person just didn't know better. Sometimes it's their first attempt, it's early on. You know, we're not judging people today. What we are trying to do though is say here's what a person has done here's what's good or bad about it and here's what you need to stay away from and i think that's a fair way of doing things especially if people have put these pictures on the internet you've got to be ready for criticism and that's what we're going to do today so i've sort of broken it down into five sort of key little things that i think count when you're trying to figure out if something is a good or bad conversion firstly proportion do the parts of the miniature look right? Um, I would go more into it, obviously, as I show pictures. The second one is aesthetic continuity, i.e. do the parts of the model look like they belong together? If you have really smooth tower weapons bolted onto a Tyranid's back, it probably doesn't belong together, right? The third thing is extraneous additions and visual overload. This happens a lot with tanks. Um, can happen at infantry level, and there are examples of that I'll show. But essentially what happens is people just bolt things onto a model and they just keep going and they don't stop and it just gets way overboard. Fourth, law violation. Now the thing with the law is, law violation is pretty, pretty subjective, probably the most subjective of all of these things. Because you can do whatever you want, basically. But there is sort of a cut off line for everyone, that line's going to be a different point, but things like Dreadnought Primarchs, for example, which is one I saw on Facebook the other day, which was shared to me by my Salty Boys. Yeah, that was pretty cringeworthy. Um, that is what it is, you know. And lastly, Pose. Pose is vital, um, but it seems to be the one people get wrong the least. That said, it is one people do get wrong, so it is in the list. That said, let's get started. Alright, so obviously proportion. This miniature here is some sort of Grey Knight Commander. He's holding a Dread Knight sword um, attached to what's probably originally was a Nemesis Halberd. Obviously this doesn't work. This sword is just far too big for the model and even in the cartoonish ludicrousy of 40k it just doesn't work. Okay, so the key fix to this would be simply swap it to a smaller blade. Something like a two-handed greatsword or some sort of axe would probably work well on this model considering its size. However, a blade that big is just... it's cartoonish. It's like Final Fantasy um, Japanese manga. And it doesn't look right within the lore or continuity of 40k and that's why it doesn't work. This one here is an Emperor of Mankind conversion. This one uses the Marnius Kelgar body from 40k and obviously has a few problems going on with proportions. The head is a fantasy head from one of the elf rangers, I think. I could be wrong about that. But it doesn't fit the body. It looks way too big and it looks like it's sort of coming out of the middle of his chest. Um, not only that, he has this weird crutch plate bolted on and it just doesn't work. Here we have a Necron Dreadnought of sorts. Now, this isn't terrible. 
but it's the proportion that kills it. You see that weapon? Yeah, it's even worse in a side on view. Is like four times the size of its legs. And even though it's an alien construct in a science fiction universe, you've got to look at these things and you immediately in your mind, in the back of your mind, you start comparing it to other constructs that exist in this universe. You look at other Necron Walkers, you look at Wraiths, you look at um, the Triarch Stalker, things like that, and you immediately go, hang on, this looks different to those, and why are they built this way, but this thing's built differently? That's the problem with, say, some of the Space Marine Flyers in 40k. Compare the Storm Wolf, or whatever it's called, the Space Wolf Flying Transport, to something like a Thunderhawk, and you're like, how come a Thunderhawk needs big wings, big engines, and then the Space Wolf thing has these tiny little engines, tiny little wings? Even Games Workshop makes this mistake. Proportion is everything, even if something doesn't look terrible. Here we have a Demon Prince. This Demon Prince is an Iron Warriors one. And he has just chain blades coming in all different directions from this massive monstrous left arm. Now yes, he is a demon. Yes, he lives in the warp and you can have weird things. That said, um, it just doesn't look right to your mind. Same thing, he's got this massive helmeted head um, using this defiler part, which is obviously a much bigger walker than this model. And because of that, the two don't sync up very well. This here is a similar Demon Prince, but this one is done correctly in my opinion. It has the um, Blood Crusher Juggernaut head of one of the sort of corn demon rhinos. Um, and the arm has been replaced with the tendrils out of one of the Chaos Dinobots kits. As you can see, there's a much better proportional thing going on here when you compare the two miniatures. One, the head and arms work. The other one, it just simply doesn't. It's really that basic. Here we have a Ferris Manus conversion. Obviously, this one has problems because you have two completely different sized arms. The arms are completely wrong for the body, his fists are bigger than his head, he has terminator legs, space marine torso, he has dreadnought shin pads perhaps for shoulder pads, I'm not quite sure what they are, but this is a proportional nightmare, and even if it's painted up well, that's not going to save this miniature, so that's why it's being pointed out here, not because I'm trying to pick on the person, but this is just a classic example of a lot of mistakes people make, especially junior hobbyists. I've made these mistakes. I've put orc arms on the Space Marines before. So don't think I'm, you know, just shitting on people. I have made many of these mistakes. Here we have a Space Marine jet bike conversion. Now, obviously he's using a Dark Elder jet bike and the concept's not terrible, but obviously the Space Marine doesn't look right on it for many reasons. He doesn't fit correctly onto it, he's not sitting correctly onto it, the bolt guns, the weaponry is just slapped onto it, and it's too small for him. It just doesn't work, and anyone can see it looking at it. But it's not terrible, it's not terrible, especially if this is a junior hobbyist, someone new to the hobby, they're just finding their feet. It's perfectly fine. Again, not trying to shit on the person. This dreadnought here, not terrible, but the way that the arms uh, drop down from the body and sort of uh, pistons hanging, it, it doesn't look correct. The Dreadnought already suffers enough from being a very top-heavy unit. This doesn't help things. It's actually exaggerating the problem, where the legs are starting to look even smaller, despite the work that's been done on them. Not a terrible concept, not a terrible conversion, but again, it's got proportional problems. Here we have a Chaos Terminator Lord. Now, the shoulder pads, whilst not great, they work. Most of this miniature works, except for the Giant Hammer. This has the Dawn of War 3 proportions. Um, the Gabriel Angelos in Dawn of War 3 and the Forge World miniature is just ridiculous because it's cartoonishly proportioned like a video game. Now, the thing is, that is fine. If that's the way you want a hobby, perfectly acceptable. However, the community as a whole, if they're taking it seriously, the by-the-book hobby, as it were, you know, in quotation marks, it's frowned upon. Not even frowned upon, it just doesn't look right, it doesn't feel right. Whatever you do with your own art and your own time is fine, but you can't pretend like it just slots neatly into the lore of the 40k universe. It really kind of doesn't. 
here we have a, another Space Marine Captain. Uh, again, of the Iron Warriors. I find a lot of bad conversions of Iron Warriors. And here's a great example. You have a Power Fist, where the shaft of the weapon is going through the actual fingers of the hand. It's not being held inside the Power Fist. Um, also, it's a chain blade at one end and a massive hammerhead at the other. I'm not even sure how you could physically swing it. So there's your first proportional problem. He can't physically swing the weapon because the chain blade would be hitting the side of his body. Even if it wasn't activated, it would still be hard to swing. On top of that, his power fists are two different sizes. There's a Space Marine power fist for regular power armor on his right hand and a Terminator power fist in his left hand. Further to this problem, you have the legs and the legs he's added some sort of converted extra armor to which is fine in principle or fine in theory i should say but in reality the way it's been done you just have these bizarre oversized shins that are ridiculously big compared to the rest of the body and they're very wide and squat this model again suffers from a lot of the classic proportional issues is it terrible no it's not utterly terrible here we have a well-painted model. Well-painted, um, mostly airbrushed and a bit of spongy. What lets it down is the missile launcher on top. Now again, I'm not trying to shit on anyone here, but that missile launcher is too big for this vehicle. If it was 50% smaller, or even half of this missile cut down the middle, it might work. But as it stands, that is too big for this tank looks cool not arguing that it doesn't but these are the sort of things you've got to keep in mind when you're doing these sort of conversions does it suit the vehicle i'm placing it on does it look quite right in this instance it doesn't does it mean i hate it no not at all here we have another one and this is a rogal dawn conversion this one suffers from the well many minor things so first thing that actually draws my attention is the head. The head is too small for the body. He has this sort of really tall thin proportion going on because this model uses the Rabute Gilliman plastic miniature from 40k which I think is a flawed miniature to begin with. Further adding to this problem is the tiny little belt buckle that he's got with the turges, the little leather straps hanging down, clearly taken from a space marine in power armor. The problem is, it's half the size it needs to be for a Primark to look correct. So, it looks really weird. It's like this tiny little flaps covering his junk. Next to that, you have this massive chainsaw, which is bigger than the Primark himself. Now, contrast it with the actual Primark model for Rogal Dawn, and you kind of go, yeah, okay, that is really over the top. And, of course, the bolt gun in his hand is like a chopped down heavy bolter, and whilst the chop down heavy bolter is fine for a Primark to carry, it's the width of the weapon sideways which looks bizarre in his hands. Overall, not a terrible conversion, but those tiny little proportional things, if they were changed, would dramatically improve the model. Here we have another Chaos Space Marine. In this instance, the old, uh, I believe, Corn Berserker head that he has is way too big for this Terminator point. It's a 90s sculpt being slapped into uh, about a 2005 sculpt. Doesn't quite work. Also, the kneecaps is Chaos Fantasy Marauder shoulder pads, I believe, or Chaos Fantasy Warrior shoulder pads, perhaps, from an older time. Can't quite put my finger on it, but they don't work. They're simply too big. And lastly, the little chainmail corset that's hanging down is attached to pretty much his nipple area instead of to his belt buckle. So it's actually hanging down from his nipples and chest, which again throws off the proportions of the model. Not terrible, but bizarre to look at. Here is another one here. Again, not terrible. However, despite the size of the image, I know it is quite small on screen. You'll see that the right arm is a Chaos Space Marine power armored arm. The rest of the model, however, is a Chaos Terminator. So you have this incredibly small arm next to this incredibly large body, and it's also holding a power armor rotor cannon. 
The fixes that I think of immediately when I see this is to give it a regular Terminator right arm. And there's no reason why you couldn't use a Terminator's right arm for this model. So I'm sort of surprised that he's gone for this design choice. I, I mean, this is a good conversion otherwise. A normal Terminator arm and take the rotor cannon that he has and cut the barrels down. Make it a short, sawn off weapon of the version. It will actually work much, much better for you proportionally. Here we have a uh, Space Marine Sniper of some sort, a Vigilator, perhaps a 30k. Proportional problems, uh, I think, speak for themselves. This bolt gun is ludicrously large. Um, yeah, and the bayonet on the end, just for good measure, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Nothing more I can really say about it. it speaks for itself. Here we have the same thing again. Um, so a few different problems here. First is a posing problem, which is he shouldn't be holding this weapon up in the air like that. This weapon would be way too big, way too heavy, even for a space marine. This is the size of a LAS cannon. Um, so that's a major problem. Uh, second, the way his wrist is slotted, oh, uh, it's like his, his right wrist looks like it's broken. So he has tried to lift this big massive cannon up in the air and snapped his wrist. Seems plausible. Uh, it, it doesn't work. Also, he has this tiny little sort of bolt gun magazine, but these massive barrels attached to the weapon. And of course, the bayonet on the end. Nothing about that proportionally works. Um, also, there's odd design choices, like the nacelles on the backpack are turned upside down. Don't know why or how it improves the model in any way, shape or form. Um, also, nacelles don't turn on power armor, as far as I know, but could be could be wrong. All in all, bizarre choices all around. Here we have an Imperial Knight conversion. And this one suffers from an issue that we'll talk about later, which is aesthetic continuity. And it suffers from proportional problems. Um, it has an arm that's as big as most of the rest of the model. Probably the size of the entire torso of the model, again, attached to one side. Uh, on top of that, it has weapons attached to it that are as big as the weapon on its other arm. So this is an incredibly lopsided model. I don't care if something's chaos. You can't just say, oh, it's chaos, you know, and say the rules no longer apply. There's sort of an established standard of what is and isn't acceptable with chaos, and this sort of, yeah, breaks that. The rest of the model is fine. The little corn symbols on it, the gargoyles, um, the banner hanging down, uh, or tabard cloth, the Reaper auto cannons replacing the heavy stubbers, they all look fine, but the left arm is what sinks this miniature. Necrons, uh, in this case we have some sort of converted cryptic out front, and the staff is just twice the size of what it needs to be in every dimension for this model. Just way, way, way too big. Apart from that, it's fine, fine model. So here it is done right. This is a Terminator. Um, I in fact know the person who made this as well, I should add. Now in this instance, the conversion is a sort of tech marine meets apothecary style look to him, is actually a character. Note the minigun is actually cut down, the assault cannon is cut right down. That means its proportions aren't too crazy, it works really well with the model. because. Yes, Terminators can carry a full-sized assault cannon, but in this instance it looks much better when it's cut down. It looks much smaller, much neater, and it suits the model better. On top of that, the pose. The pose is not very splay-legged. He's not standing incredibly upright. He's leaning into the weight, which is that big weapon that he's holding on the right-hand side. On top of that, notice that both arms are actually Terminator arms. He hasn't used regular Space Marine arms. This is how simple proportioning can be, and it makes a world of difference. Again, same thing here with this particular Terminator. So the twin auto cannon has been chopped right back to pretty much just really short muzzles. Looks kind of like a British World War II pom-pom. But same thing again. Terminator arms, Terminator body. Has used a Space Marine helmet, however the helmet proportionally does suit the miniature's torso. 
and here we have an orc conversion. Now orcs sort of get given the most rope when it comes to conversions, because you can do a lot of crazy stuff. That said, people can be prone to mistakes even with orcs. This orc is not a mistake. This is an excellent conversion. It's really simple. Anyone looking at it can tell that. You can see this is basically just stock parts apart from a little bit of work on the backpack and the way that the sort of gun axe is being formed in the hand. But do note that chopper is no crazier than any other chopper I've seen in the orcs. It's about the size of the orcs torso which is about correct for most orc choppers. If it was twice the size of what it is that's where sort of the warning bells start going off. So this is again proportioning done correctly. Now we move into aesthetic continuity. This is where you have parts that work but don't work together. So in this instance you have this really smooth rounded off panels that make up most of the central mass, this miniature. Then all of a sudden you get to the legs and to the wings and you have these long straight sections of flat and angular plate. They contrast too heavily with the rounded plate in my opinion. Now again, I could be totally wrong, some people may love this, and perfectly welcome to love it. I'm not the be all end all of defining what makes great hobby. I'm just giving you my opinion here. On top of that, the wings have this jagged, almost lightning bolt effect with the gold trim moving back and forth across them. None of the rest of the model has this. So again, it stands out, it sticks out, it doesn't look right to you. So these are the things you gotta think of. Just because things may fit together, doesn't mean that they look quite right to the eye. Another instance of it is this Necron uh, Imperial Knight conversion. So, okay, the legs are fine. The weapon it's holding in the right arm is fine for a Necron. Then it sort of goes south because you have clearly Imperial weaponry uh, on the chest. There is a bizarre rib cage of sorts moving over the back of the Knight. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. The knight without a carapace is fine at itself. It doesn't need to have a carapace. In fact, the understructure, the skeletal understructure of the knight works with Necrons quite well, in my opinion. But the ribs makes no sense. Why would the Necrons be putting bone into this? There is much better choices of parts out there that could have been used on this, such as parts of the Triarch Stalker, or even some of the Necron Flyers, maybe it would have been good choices to use instead and then when you look at the arm that it has for some reason it's just wrapped in wire after wire after wire perhaps hinting at a flayed one or something like that but i can't tell it makes no sense and that's what lets it down here we have another one this is just an absolute mishmash of parts again aesthetic continuity do these parts look like they belong together? When you have Eldar, Necron, Imperial, Dark Eldar, Demon, Tyranid, that's at least what I can see on this miniature. When you have all those parts just smashed together, Imperial Guard, um, Fantasy parts, there's an axe on its back for some reason. Visual overload for a start, but aesthetically, what the hell is this? You see, it doesn't fit in, you can't even claim it as a conversion to suit an army, because I think most people just go and have their minds blown when they look at it. Here we have a Necron Defiler, or Soul Grinder. Again, lots of angular plates with trim on the edges of them, very square, blocky, robotic, and all of a sudden there's this really smooth central part on top of it, because they've used a Tau Piranha and it doesn't suit the model. But when you do this, subtlety, like in this miniature, can do everything. Look at the subtle work done on the head of this demon, on this soul rider. This green stuff work and that large soul gem with energy burning off in the center, that's perfect. That's all it takes. Don't need to slap a piranha on top of it, just that tiny little bit of effort in green stuffing and that kind of thing can really bring out a model make it pop people have this opinion that you need to add more and more stuff onto models in the game but no you don't you don't have to do that at all less can be more and less is more 99 percent of the time here we have another aesthetic continuity issue 
you have a land raider. Perfectly fine. All of a sudden, you have this bizarre cockpit that comes out the front of it, which is... it just doesn't work. It's got these windscreen, I get that it's part of a rhino, but without the visor on it, without any sort of additional armoring, it looks like a truck sticking out of a tank. An obvious weak spot, and it doesn't look right to the eye, especially because Space Marine tanks don't generally protrude uh, forth of their tracks, except in the case of the Spartan tank. But at least in the case of the Spartan tank, where it protrudes, it's only the opening doors that do so. Speaking of which, this here is a plastic conversion of a Spartan tank. This uses plastic Land Raider parts, and yes, you have the slightly protruding door of the tank, but it's only just coming past the tracks. This is a conversion done correctly. Everything looks like it belongs. Yeah, okay, you can see the putty on it. Yeah, you can see file marks. You can see all the different types of resins, materials, and bits and pieces that have gone into making it. But that said, nothing is terrible about this model. Everything is good. Everything looks right. This looks like a Space Marine tank should, in my opinion. This is aesthetic continuity in action. There are no round parts. There are no tower parts. There are no Necron parts randomly put on there. Everything that's on this has a purpose and has a place. Here we have a Tau Riptide battle suit placed onto a Triarch Stalker body, and yet it works. Why does it work in this instance and not in so many others? Well, the angular and yet smooth panels of the legs complement the angular and yet smooth panels of the Tau. Straight lines, smooth panels, very little detail otherwise on them. The two work together really well. This is how easy it can be if it's done right. Now, extraneous additions and visual overload. Let's talk about that. Here we have some sort of Dread Knight Space Wolf conversion. I don't know why, but it exists. Um, where does it go wrong? So firstly, the crew. The crew member has power fists for no rhyme or reason doesn't look right. Next, there are Space Wolf shields over the knees, um, up on the shoulders. It's too much. There's just too many things going on with this model. Fur pelts hanging off it everywhere, on both sides of the miniature, hanging off the legs. I, I'm guessing a lot of these design decisions were made in order to cover up inquisitorial parts, like where there's Scripture and Malkador's icon but it doesn't work. There's too much going on with this model. Looks very wrong. Also, he has a standard Space Marine torso instead of a Terminator torso, from what I can tell, which is a bizarre choice. Here is a Tau Battle Suit Commander, and in this instance, he has a random knife stuck to the front of his torso, and he has a part of a Dreadnought's hull attached to his left side, perhaps some sort of shoulder pad or shield. When I build a model, I like to ask myself, what is that part doing there? And when I look at the knife on that Tau miniature, I'm like, what is it doing there? It's not his knife. He can't use it. The grips are far too small for the hands of the battle suit. Uh, also, the placement of it is terrible if you want to use it. He should have it on his thigh, perhaps. Um, or maybe attached to the chest, but with the handle facing down so he can reach across the chest and pull the knife in a downwards motion. That would make sense. Now, you may think I'm picking on it and being pedantic here, but when you look at this model, I think most people will find in your own mind you're questioning it and going, why does it have a knife there? Right? And I'm explaining to you right now why it's wrong to you, because it is wrong. It doesn't make sense. It's too small for the model, the hands can't grip the weapon, the placement is wrong, there's nothing holding it on, it's just literally a knife in a leather sheath just slapped onto the front of its chest. When you build a model, ask yourself, is the part I'm putting on practical? And if so, how is the model going to use it? It's no good slapping on knives and uh, swords and things like that onto the back of a marine's backpack and then ask yourself, how does he reach it? Okay. Here we have an example of people sort of starting to overload the miniature. Why does it have all these guns on its torso? 
I think it's a nice way of building a combat dreadnought and also having a DACA dreadnought. But obviously there's way too much going on here. The big shields hang on the arms or on the shoulders. Uh, and of course these these guns and you can dial this up to 11 with the next miniature you may be an orc player but you don't get a free pass just because you're an orc player there is still there is still a, an acceptable limit this is probably 50 percent past that limit um this miniature is so ridiculous it defies belief i get it's probably been made as a bit of a joke um but still a few less guns, a few more proportional changes or design choices, and this would be 100% better. Not a bad model. I'm not saying it's a bad model. But it's got some really weird shit going on. Especially because it's symmetrical. Now, I don't know how many people here play orcs, but how many symmetrical orc units do you see? Where for every gun, there is an equal gun of equal size and shape positioned opposite it on the same model it doesn't happen and it looks wrong to you see even orcs don't get a free pass this should have an array of bizarre length barrels different barrel shrouds different missiles all over the shop instead you could cut this model down the middle and it has the same guns on the left and the same guns on the right and that looks odd to you because you know an orc shouldn't look like that and that's why the model doesn't work the left arm and the right arm on the model is the closest it gets to being a proper orc because they're completely different one is full of guns conversion beamers battle cannons the other one is these big chopping claws completely different works for orcs symmetrical does not another uh, extraneous addition is this thing here I believe it's an orc but it has a Wraith Knight's hand with choppers stuck end to end and I'm not sure what parts are being used to make up the back of it. Uh, Dreadnought parts are in there for sure, but essentially you can't just put bits together from the bits box and say it works as an orc vehicle. It doesn't. This is just a bizarre mishmash of parts. I have nothing more to say on that. Here is another Dreadnought. This suffers from um, a syndrome I see a lot, which is where people take an existing miniature with existing iconography and they go, hmm, this has ultramarine symbols or imperial fist symbols. What do I do? I'll just slap my own symbols over the top of it. And they just slap more and more on top. And so this thing has three layers of imperial wings and quillers and dark angels icons on its chest. Too much. Way too much. Too much shit going on. This is a visual eyesore because of it. Same thing with this chaplain of Zench. Judging from the icon. Um, way too much stuff going on. I struggle visually with this model and the colours obviously don't help. Um, yeah, nothing more to say. This land raider. Wow, where to begin? Again, not saying it's terrible, just it has a lot going on, and that's the wow factor. Um, could you even enter and exit the vehicle now? Not through the front hatch, there's a giant head in the way with massive horns. Um, the Chimera headed dozer blades probably don't help either. It's just a visual nightmare, there's too much going on. Uh, f again, free little pointer if you're converting up something, the bigger the model, the more shit you can add to it good rule of thumb right so well you can put a shield the size of a marine on a dreadnought a shield the size of a marine on a marine looks a bit bizarre well with tanks obviously you could probably put this many things on a titan and it would work maybe even on just a bigger tank chassis like a bane blade but on this smaller tank it is way too much Here we have another uh, Rogel Dawn Rebute Gilliman conversion. This one does suffer from proportional issues. I mean, look at the head. It's a Space Marine's head in this gigantic Rebute Gilliman torso. But it suffers from the extraneous additions and visual overload problem. 
the aquila on the back is huge and with the kneecaps especially the right kneecap he actually has a shoulder pad i believe off a marine cut down to replace his kneecap because they've just placed it over where the ultramarine's iconography used to be furthermore to this it's not helped by the fact that it looks like he has a regular space marine's arm not gilliman's arm on the left hand side um, and he also has Custode's shoulder pad placed on top of Gilliman's shoulder pad on the left side. So he's got a double shoulder pad and slapping things on top of things on top of things is not a good look for any model. Again, personal bias, but take it how you will. Again, I'm not trying to put the people down who did this conversion or similar conversions. It's just making a point of it. Here we have sort of one of those classic conversions you do see floating around, the old uh, stretched land raider. I hate them all. That's only my personal opinion. But what makes them wrong most times is this sort of bizarre ways that human centipedes are put together. In this instance, there's old Mark I Rhino front armor hull plates slapped onto the gap between the two to try and close it up a bit. It looks weird to look at. Um, and the vin old school Vindicator front hull, same sort of problem again. Something looks off about it to your eye. Um, not just because the conversion clearly isn't finished, but because it's got more stuff going on. It's aesthetically, the additions and visual overload doesn't work. Here we have an altar of chaos of sorts. I'm fine with turning land raiders into altars for the gods. I think it's a great idea actually. I think it's really cool. If it's done well. And this one is on that borderline where it's just getting that bit too much. Like the additional space marine on the back, the dark apostle on his own, and the raw, sh raw shrine parts, they kind of work. But the tusks on the front of the land raider, the smoke launchers, the additional marine, they all need to go. Remove those uh, bits and this is probably just right but as you can see it is a lot there a lot going on on top of this tank same again with this one um where do i begin the multiple predator turrets that seem to be built into the tracks and the track guards is a bizarre choice as is the single land raiders uh las cannons on the sides possibly pulled from a predator tank they just stick really far out from the vehicle because they've been bolted onto Land Raider Crusader bolter sponsors. Further to this, um, these big sort of track guards, I'm not sure where they're from, but they really are big. They stick out with these fleur de lis sort of symbols on them. And yeah, it's just a, there's a lot going on with this model and it doesn't work. Though many turrets doesn't work on this vehicle, ever. This Imperial Knight, Defiler, whatever you want to count it as. Uh, very long, lanky, stubby arms. Proportionally, it's it's got a lot of problems. Uh, the big hole in the crutch where they haven't even covered up that part of the conversion is also another problem. Aesthetically, ugh. This Imperial Knight, another example of just adding things on. The side cannons, either side of the head, that's that's fine, I can live with that. The shoulder pad with the shield on it, on the left shoulder pad, not great. Um, the fact that the knight's shoulder pads are upside down in the first place is a bit of a bizarre design choice. Doesn't look quite right, but you can bear it. But the way that the additional icons are just slapped over the top of the existing icons, like on the center torso, um, the icon that is covering the Aquila, partially. It sticks out, it looks like something that's just fallen onto the top of the knight. Same as the Lamb Raider Crusader uh, frag assault launchers that have been slapped onto it. They look bizarre. Also, the right hand side, the fact that it has this big melter cannon and then for some reason also has a battle cannon built into the tip of it, doesn't look right to your eye. This is a, a big problem. A lot of people seem to suffer from in the community. It's just slapping things on top of things. Don't do it. Here we have another Land Raider War Shrine sort of going on. It's very busy up top. And it probably would work just fine. 
if you maybe got rid of the two Space Marine crew on top. I think, yeah, I think that'd probably do it. Just get rid of the Space Marine crew and this tank's pretty much there. It has a lot going on, but you need to have gaps between all the detail. Too much detail overloads the miniature and it goes from being a really cool concept to just, well, over the top. Here we have another example of a Tau Converted Commander. Um, this one has a lot of extra stuff just randomly bolted on. Mostly from the crew sprue and mostly hanging off his belts, crutch, hips, whatever you want to call that area. Why is it there and what's it doing? Um, the twin plasma gun on the shoulder pad that aren't even in alignment with one another is a bizarre choice. The uh, additional sensor pods mounted to the sides of his head. The part of a tower carbine mounted on the very top of his head. A very bizarre choices. Um, the missile pod can't even fire without hitting himself in the head. I don't get why these design decisions were made. Um, there's also additional parts of Tau rifles stuck onto the sides of his nacelles at the back. Um, you can see in the lower left hand image, you can see them sort of just slapped on there and on the back of his legs as well. There is way too much going on with this miniature. It is overload and it ruins the model, frankly. Here we have a not terrible conversion, but it's got a lot of problems. This is a 30k Marty, uh, Robude Gilliman that's now doubling as a Brogal Dawn. Where do you begin pointing out the flaws? So, everywhere there's etched brass, there is an ultramarine symbol underneath of some kind which hasn't been filed off. So, on the left shin, for example, that's a 13 for the Ultramarine's Legion number. And you can see the Roman numerals are still there. Someone has just glued etched brass over the top of it. This sort of conversion infuriates me because the concept's not terrible but the implementation is. The Gladius sword that he's holding in his power fist, the sheath of the sword is now being used as a hand grip for the chain sword. The better choice here would have been to remove the left arm entirely and replace it with another left arm. Instead you now have a chain sword that's going into a sheath and then out the sheath and then it looks like there's another sheath or some kind or scabbard making up the rest of the handle of it and it, it, it's just terrible it's just a terrible design choice it's extraneous additions and visual overload and on top of that it's aesthetically wrong and proportionally wrong so this has broken most of the conversion rules in this one miniature this on the other hand is doing it right so all those shrines to chaos I was talking about earlier this is what you do. This is a Thousand Suns Land Raider for Chaos. Nice, sharp, simple. You have a shrine on top and obviously the sand and skulls flowing away from it and then the rest of the tank's pretty much plain. It's not covered in thousands of hieroglyphs, it's not covered in Chaos spikes all over. Um, there aren't Egyptian pharaohs telling stories on the sides of the doors. This is when you don't overload something, this is how good the effect can be. Here's another example of not visually overloading something. So the proportions on this are good. The parts used are great. Yes, there are Necron legs used on this Chaos model. Normally that would be a faux pas, but they've been converted, they've been filed, they've been puttied, and then they've been drilled into to create all these noxious pock marks. All of a sudden, it blends in with the general design of the model. I really like this. The only parts that sort of let it down is the top weapons. At the very, very top of it. It's great apart from that. But when you get up to the very top of the miniature, you all of a sudden have this just random battle cannon and random machine guns just sort of plonked on top of it. If it wasn't for that, this would be a perfect conversion. Now, here is another one that's a great example of putting detail into a miniature without overdoing it. He has marine arms. That's a check straight off the bat. No Terminator arms here. That staff is out of a Terminator kit. That's a Chaos Terminator Lord's staff. He has cut the Terminator hand out of it and replaced it with a marine's hand. Perfect. That's what you want to see. So he doesn't have a gigantic Quagmire hand. 
by Magnus the Red the Demon Primark does. Again, Games Workshop gets things wrong, as much as the players do. On top of this, he has a left hand which is holding a book casting a spell, and it's just a skeleton lunging out of the book. There are all sorts of things he could have done here. He could have had the entire skeleton coming out. He could have had multiple skeletons coming out. There could have been a, a knight coming out of his hand, for all I know. There are any number of different design choices that could have been made with his left hand casting a spell. But by going for the less is more approach, the model works, and it works really well painted up too. Pity I don't have a picture of it, but I did see it. And then we get to law violations. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this. We know what they are. You know, um, Tau, Orc, hybrids, and Gene Stealer hybrids like this knight here, where someone says a possessed knight by Gene Stealers. That's not how it works um, in the fluff. Now, I can go into why, but nobody really cares. You just know it's wrong. If someone wants to make it, convert it, that's fine. Don't go around telling people, no, it's perfectly fine in the universe. It's not. You can do it for your own sake. No one will argue with you about it. It's like going into a Star Wars film and saying, no, Luke Skywalker didn't blow up the Death Star. If that's how you want to think about it, fine. But it, it goes contrary to the rest of the established universe, okay? That's all I'm going to say on it. War violations are a problem. People are not going to compliment your work if you break the war. Just deal with it. Alright, last of all, posing. So, obviously, this guy here, doing the Are uh, You Entertained from Gladiator, doesn't really work. There are times when it might, but in this instance it doesn't. The person who's converted it, they haven't done a terrible job, but it just looks wrong. Something about the miniature. Uh, probably because he is sort of looking slightly to the left. See, when you have a left foot forward, like on this miniature, generally you want the head following the knee or looking the other way. If you want to have a miniature like this, which is wide-armed, as if challenging the enemy, you want to have them in a straight-legged pose. That's what looks visually right. Because think about it. You ever see a soccer player, for example, a European football player, they hold their arms out to the crowd, they do it with one leg forward, looking slightly to the left? No, they don't. They face the crowd in a sort of crucifixion Jesus pose, because they all have a god complex, because they're fucking football players. Here we have another one, Space Marine throwing a grenade. The grenade arm, you can see that the elbow of the left arm is sort of hollowed out, because it's not designed to be held at that angle, that arm. That's a bolt gun arm with a grenade cut and put into the hand. Now, that's in itself a problem. Then you get to the right arm, which is being cut at the elbow, above the elbow, and then rotated around. Essentially, this Marine now has either a dislocated elbow or a dislocated shoulder, because his arm is just flung around, pointing in a completely opposite direction. Doesn't look right to you visually. Apart from that, the model is fine. But again, these little visual clues that you may or may not notice are what make and break a great conversion. This here is a pose done right. So, knee up in the air, victorious, standing on top of his defeated enemy. Note there is a use of plastic parts, resin parts, and metal parts all together in this one miniature. They all work together just fine. The model is facing towards you, the person viewing him, and his head is very much the center of what's going on. He has a single shoulder pad with heaps of detail on it. The other one is quite plain. The chest, quite plain. This is how the model comes from Forge World, in most of it. Uh, plain backpack. That shoulder pad, he's added the salamander scales to it, but apart from that, that's how it comes from Forge World. You'll notice that it's really subtle. It's not visually overloaded. The pose is good, the proportions are good. The aesthetic continuity is there. The head is not too big for the body. The arms are not too big for the body. The hands are not too big for the body. Nothing is too small for the body either. He doesn't have too much going on. He doesn't have two shoulder pads covered in skulls and salamander scales and things like that. His chest isn't covered in purity seals. He doesn't have etched brass stuck all over him. Less is more. Also, the last model we're going to be looking at today is this one here. And same thing. So, leg up in the air, looking towards you. 
classic pose. You can either be looking over the right knee, as that's the one in the air, or looking away from it, which is what he's doing. That is the way that you pose that sort of model with those legs. The way he's got the sword held out to the back is almost as if he's stepping forward with the right leg, which is what you do. Arm goes to the back as the leg on that side goes forward. But there's no square gating around here, so again, looks correct. Also, the head that he's holding in the left hand is being thrust forward into focus. So again, his body language is showing you he's aggressive, he's stooping forward, his head is slightly lowered as if he's going to charge at you. The pose tells you everything, and that's what makes a great conversion. Also, it's the little things. Yep, he's standing on a dead marine on the base. It's just a helmet, and the helmet is also being drilled out. It's not a helmet which has a flat, solid base to it, which is a mistake a lot of people made. I did myself when I was younger as well. The tendency of people is to put a whole dead marine on a base, or half a marine, his torso, his intestines hanging out, things like that. Again, scale it to the model. A single helmet works really well for a single marine to stand on. A whole marine standing on a whole marine looks wrong. Um, this is not the Horus Heresy character series where people stand on top of dead knights, okay? <laughs> especially on a 25mm base. So think of it like this, a 25mm base marine helmet, 32mm base marine torso, 40mm base marine torso, 50mm base, maybe a whole marine at that point, uh, 60mm base, start thinking about vehicle parts, like dreadnought arms, things like that, and scale it up accordingly, okay? Um, also, if you have something like a dreadnought or a wraith knight or an imperial knight and they're standing on a marine, don't have a whole marine standing there with the weight of an imperial knight on top of them it doesn't work <laughs> you know that knight should be crushing that marine so keep that in the back of your mind anyway i'm back with the outer circle i hope you enjoyed the episode again the whole point of this was just to say what i personally think about when i look at conversions and when people ask me maka what makes a good conversion what makes a good kit bash does this work does that work this is the stuff that comes to my mind this is the stuff i think about when I look at it and I say, what's the pose? What are the parts? Do the parts belong together? Okay? Do the proportions look right? Does he have big hands, little hands, little head, big torso, uh, little torso, big head? You know, it sounds so crazy. And again, I'm not saying people can't do what they want. You can create whatever you like. You can make a tower fire warrior with a Necron legs. Go for it. If you try and justify it in the law, that'd be interesting, and it probably won't work in your favour if people say that that shouldn't exist. If you tell them, oh, I just wanted to create it for the sake of creating it, people will probably be fine. But if you try and force it on them and say, I think this should be in the game because it's my game, you're going to cop flack, okay? There's no two ways about it. People are going to shit on you because you're coming into an established universe and then trying to change it to suit your own selfish personal desires. And that's why people get shitty when they see bad hobby. It's not because they don't want you to express yourself or make your own art. Most, you know, it's this sort of trap, like identity politics that people fall into where they say, this person disagrees with me, therefore they're, you know, sexist, racist, whatever. It happens in the hobby. People disagree with you and they say, oh, look, your choice of conversion parts is not great for this reason. And then also they get jumped on by the community around them. Go, oh, how dare you not support his hobby? It's his hobby, man. He's allowed to... If people are sharing their stuff on the internet, especially if they're asking for feedback, give them feedback. Don't be shy about it. If you get kicked from a group, that group is for pussies anyway. You know, you should be able to share your opinion. You know, the standards have dropped so much in the hobby. And... You know... There's nothing wrong with standards. There's nothing wrong with saying, this is what I think works, this is what doesn't. Anyway, my dog is nestling up to me and wants some love and affection, so I'm going to go back to being sick for a while, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I'll see you all next time.